if you collected uh, Mezco toys, if you collected Palisades, NECA, then you'll definitely know this guy's work. Thank you so much for taking the time. I have the one and only Trevor Zamet with us here today. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Everything uh, going well in this crazy time period of our uh, of our lives at the moment? It's, uh, yeah, things are as good as they can be, I guess, all things considered. Right. <laughs> as long as you wake up and you're somehow alive, I think uh, you're doing okay. <laughs> yeah, on the right side of the dirt, you know. Right. <laughs> For those that don't know, um, who are you? Wait, what are you doing here on this uh, on this this podcast? So what are you what are you doing here? What do you what do you do for uh, the toy community? <laughs> uh, okay, well let's see. I guess mainly I I work for NECA Toys. Um, I'm currently the brand manager, I guess for uh, the uh, the Ninja Turtles that oh. you know NECA makes. I've never heard of those. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, it's brand new. Oh okay, All right. real cutting edge stuff we're doing here <laughs> i'll tell you just with what you guys are doing with turtles it's one of the most fun lines that has come out in a while just because you know when you do them there's only so many let's say you know for a time period and then when the, you get ready for the next wave to come out like i'm ready for uh the the cartoon slash and the leatherhead you know to start hitting like every day oh yeah and now that we got the um trench coat raff and and uh, casey jones from walmart you know everyone's getting ready i can just feel it you know for that walmart <laughs> onslaught <laughs> yeah they're um yeah the stuff that's out now is it's really cool and there's there's lots more on its way um i just got a sample randy just sent me one of the painted um like pre-production samples of the like the cartoon casey jones oh cool so okay. that's sitting on my desk right now it's that that's one you know the cartoon slash and casey are two that i'm really really excited about and proud of they're kind of midway through production right now so they should be they should be shipping in a few weeks you know maybe a month and Excellent. Uh, yeah okay. before you know it they'll be sold out at target <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's funny uh, about the the slash because I have the, the Turtles in Time one that you guys did. And by the way, I think I mean with Bebop and Rocksteady, those those are amazing. Uh, slash has always been like a fan favorite of mine. You know, from the comic, mainly the comics. The cartoon one, okay. he's a bit more dopey. Looks a lot different. But he's really weird. Especially in the with cartoon, the, yeah. Yeah. It. I. But I like that. You guys went with both versions so that, you know, because a lot of people are saying to me, they'll see the Turtles in Time, like, what's, Slash didn't look like that. And then they'll see the cartoon one and they'll go, wait, Slash didn't look like that. So it's kind of funny that to see yeah. the exact differences between cartoons, He's, and comics, all that. The Turtles in Time one is probably the, maybe the definitive version or it's the most recognizable because it's so similar to the Playmates, the original, like, Playmates Yeah. Form. You know, um, and yeah, definitely people forget what he looked he what he actually looked like on the show. I think he's in three episodes all together, and uh, yeah, the cartoon was like it was it was so weird and different, and yeah, we had to do both because there you can't just like repaint the video game slash yeah the cartoon colors. It'd be it would be so off, you know. I, yes, but he's got like that giant. But that again kind of evokes the old Playmates one too. So it's mm -hmm. it's kind of like the Playmates is both of them mashed together in a sort of uh, sort of style. Um, yeah, it kind of like that Playmates toy. You could see it like splintered off into like a couple different. Or you know, there it went. The cartoon is like one crazy extreme, and the video game. Yeah. Is the other and and then there's the Archie comics that you know he was. That's my that's slash. Easy. That that's the one. I hope you yeah. guys make that or some way, you know, maybe put some extra line or however you can do it. But that's uh, always been what I think of when I think of slash and the turtles in time one most closely closely um, resembles that. So that's why I was like equally happy. I'm like, he just needs his binky, you know, palm tree or whatever. <laughs> He'll have <laughs> Which, it. The the cartoon one will definitely have it. There's, yeah. Yeah, we try to put like all those little accessories, like especially if you've seen that episode, you know, like. He has to come with the binky, you know, so 
<laughs> um, so yeah, he's got that. The cartoon one's gonna have that. He's got the little like the pre-mutated like baby slash that was mm-hmm. like Bebop. I think it was Bebop's pet. Mm-hmm. So we'll have that. Yeah, there's there's like tons of accessories and um, leather. I don't think we ever announced it. Like Leatherhead is gonna have. He's gonna come with like a like a long piece of string for like kind of like a lasso to like tie up the turtles and he's going to have a uh, like a big net that you can like in the punk frog episodes okay you know, where they all like or like in return of the jedi where they all get trapped like in a giant net yeah so, um because leatherhead was so big we couldn't we couldn't tool too many accessories with them mm-hmm. so we found like ways around that with just like giving them rope and net and uh there's like a shackle like manacles and a chain and that real chain so um so lots of fun stuff to like you know capture the turtles and tie them up and whatever yeah and that's another thing you guys do well especially with you when we were previously talking is that you know your attention to detail with picking out show specific accessories even from you know i'm a huge ninja turtle fan but i'm not like the ninja turtle fan where i can look at like that hamster statue that comes with april because i had to look i was like what the heck is that like it's i know it's from something (laughs) but i can't tell you you know but i like that and i I like when um because it shows to me that one you know the source material and that's who i want making the toys you know what i mean like put in the weird stuff that i have to go back or i actually see it and i go oh that's really cool That, that was one of my favorite episodes you know stuff like that so oh yeah the um uh well, that the Maltese hamster, like my <laughs> grandfather was Maltese and that's such okay. a weird, like, like, um, obscure, like it's a very small country in the middle of the Mediterranean. And like, most people don't know, like Malta is a country, <laughs> like mm-hmm. no one knows it exists. Right. Yeah. So when I was a little kid, like I had never, you know, when I was like 10, I, I didn't know what the Maltese Falcon was, but when there was a Ninja Turtle episode called the Maltese hamster, I was just like, <laughs> holy crap like this is amazing and like you know i was talking about anyways that that one specifically was like i had to include it just because of my own heritage you know pigeon pete is in an episode of like a really obscure episode and a lot of people don't remember that so we yeah you know, try to put that stuff in there for you know just kind of for fun um you know when we were kids like there's so many toys that you just get like a generic like a rocket launcher or these big like oversized weapons that didn't really like they you know there's a fun like kind of play value with those things but they they weren't really from an episode they didn't really fit with the characters Mm -hmm. that was always a pet peeve of mine when i was a kid like like ghostbuster action figures i think there's only like one peter vankman figure that ever came with an actual like a ghost trap yeah everything else was like a big crazy over the top like some sort of ghost nabber or something you know and i was like i just wanted like the ghost pogo stick like, yeah on, like, yeah i just wanted stuff <laughs> that was like in scale and like from the show or from the movie like a pke meter like you know so that's that's always been like a pet peeve of mine and, and something i try to do on on our figures is like now it's different because it's all you know it's for collectors it's not for kids we're just making the toys that we always wanted exactly but, yeah yeah, and I I I feel in that because yeah, especially with Ghostbusters, I think I, I love the real Ghostbusters. It's always it's gonna be always one of my favorite lines. But you see, as an adult, where it was about play feature over cartoon accuracy, and yeah, with the fun. turtles, it's like yeah, kids are they're not for kids. Kids aren't gonna go. Oh, April O'Neil has a um a cam a camera like an old fashioned camera. But on the Playmates one, it had a gun inside her camera, which yep. is amazing and awful at the same time. But, yeah, it's you know, all weird give her stuff. stuff yeah. yeah. give Yeah, give her stuff that's incorporates the cartoon and the source material instead of a, <laughs> like you said, like a giant, you know, it's not even a proton pack at that point. It was like a ghost extendo glove. or You know what I mean? It was, oh, yeah. it was always something... Um, a function over 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 the form of it so 
but good good memories i guess on both ends of the spectrum was there anything like you guys have that new uh, like the ultimate foot so- the foot soldier with all the different crazy attachments and everything oh, yeah. else like that is that um something that we can see like i know you, you know you're going to be doing the krang's android body and things yeah. um that's another one i'm really looking forward to because even though the playmates one they had the giant they had the small one and they had the giant one um just in seeing, you know, the bits and pieces that you guys have kind of teased, I'm so looking forward to that thing. That is one of the, the ones that I just can't wait for. <laughs> that was one I always hoped we'd get to, and it seemed like a couple of years ago, it seemed so far off in the distance, like it was just not not feasible. And uh, yeah, it's great. So he's another one. There's a bunch of show specific attachments to his arms like he has these like like maces on like chains that he it's a bizarre scene where he he has like an armory he walks in he like takes his arms off and then like connects like like these swinging ball like mace weapons he like attaches them into his wrist but there's no way he could like grab them and hook them up i don't know if you've ever seen that clip we should i'll try i think I think I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, he, so he takes his arms off and then, like, plugs these weapons, these, like, mace weapons into his arms. And, and it's, they're they're really cool. And then there's, like, there's this really obscure scene where Shredder, someone's calling him on the communicator, and he just, like, stepped out of the shower. Yeah. You know, and we're, <laughs> like, I actually, we made all that stuff. Like, I sculpted, like, soap on a rope and the shower cap, and he has, like, a little fabric like a felt towel you can like wrap around them. So that's the kind of stuff where I'm like, maybe I can get away with this. I don't know. Like, we'll see. And yeah. so it's like sculpt it kind of like extra. And if we, if we can afford to do it, like if everything costs out right at the factory, then we'll just leave it in. And then it's like how, how great it like, cause there's going to be like a handful of people that know what it is and you know, they'll do some cool like Instagram photos and stuff. Mm-hmm. And for everyone else, it's like, I mean, you just, sweep it to the side you, you know just display them kind of normal looking so yeah right and they'll look at it and be like what why is he got a shower cap like what and then but i would <laughs> assume that people would try to look that up um and like the other thing that was great was uh right around it was right around toy fair um and i was talking you know talking to randy falk who's my boss and uh, Randy's like, should we do like a new version of Krang to go with the Android body? Because I also like just kind of assumed it would be like the old the old Playmates toy where it's like you get the big like you already, we already have Krang from the Bubble Walker, you know. Mm-hmm. And so now you can buy the Android body and you can put Krang in there. And Randy's like, maybe we should just do a second version of Krang. Mm. And I was like, oh, cool. So we sculpted him like a little bigger and he's like a little more accurate to the show. Um, so there'll be a, like a whole, like a brand new Krang to come with the Android body. And he's, that's cool. He's just, and he, he looks great and he's just big enough. Like he will, the new big Krang will fit into the old bubble Walker. So everything's okay. every, like there's new arms that he has to like grab the little like control sticks, like in the, you know, in the body. Mm-hmm. But everything's interchangeable and everything kind of you can swap one out for the other. And it's all like, yeah, it's all uh, it's all pretty cool, cool stuff. Awesome. That see, like right in there, like you telling me that, you know, it's you can interchange and kind of swap out. And that, that's that to me uh, means a lot because there's nothing worse than getting like, you know, the old crane. Then you can't say like, oh, this one can't work with this or can't, you know. Yeah, it, it's. It, Trying to it's like cool. just ex- like build on the collection you have and like expand it, like make it better, like trying to not make anything else like really obsolete, you know. But it's just like if you have the one thing, you don't have to throw it out or you know buy it. Yeah. Again. So. No, that's good because there's basically there's two versions. You don't you don't feel like you're buying the same thing um, yet again. You know, even though yeah. you know some people say, oh, they released the turtles again. You know, I'm glad that you did them in a different color scheme. They're more more archy kind of com you know com- they're, they're brighter in color so tech for yeah. me i would say no it's a different it's a different turtle you know it's so it's not the same thing over and over again so yeah i, I do like that you guys do that a lot will 
Uh, the android body have the the wings, the big red wings from. Does, the <laughs> no. it, we had, we had <laughs> talked about that. It does. He doesn't have the he doesn't have the wings. He has like there's two gun hands, blaster okay. hands, I should say, because gun is a bad word with toys. But he's got two blaster hands. He has a saw attachment. He's got the mace hands. We didn't do the walkie-talkie. We didn't. Oh, and then his, I think there's a big axe. There's oh, a saw, cool. axe, two blasters, two maces, crang, baby shredder. He comes with a baby shredder and all the bath, all the bath stuff. Excellent. I think that's the complete set. What What is it about the turtles that, even now, why why are your guys' stuff selling? So like in I guess in juxtaposition you have the rise of the TMNT and those kind of they were mostly nah, you know what I mean kind of pan. But mm-hmm. is it the what is it about the classic turtles? You know whether it be comic cartoon, you know that's still really a poignant piece for a lot of people because I get a lot of people that say. I've never collected anything. I heard these are coming out. How do I find these? You know, you get people that have never even thought about these a second, you know, collecting toys in general. And then you get yeah. people like turtles meant a lot to me. How do I find these in the store? And I'm just like, Oh, well, welcome to the madness. <laughs> um, <laughs> you yeah. know, here's this, this, and this, but like, yeah, what do you think? Is it, is it just nostalgia or is it just the turtles themselves? Or Certainly nostalgia has a big part of that um Mm -hmm. it's got a lot to do with it um you know the classic stuff it's it's hard it's so iconic it's hard to to beat it you know and like you think about like like spider-man's costume it's like that original costume is still it can't be topped you know there's a million different versions of you know spider-man has so many different outfits but like the original one is is always going to be the best and yeah and then like for us like we really just at like at NECA like we're making figures that we we would want to buy you know mm-hmm. we're super lucky to be like at a company where it's just like above all else it's like if if you can't get behind this like if you're not excited about it it's like you really we shouldn't be doing it you know so like everything yeah. that we make there is like something that someone like usually it's more than one of us it's like this is all stuff that we want to buy we want to collect and play with and display and um certainly with the turtles that's that was the case for me like i just this was stuff that i never really uh it never really existed before in in you know kind of at this like capacity so like yeah I, I just wanted to make the toys that I always wanted. And that's sort of like resonated with, um, you know, a lot of fans. No. And I, I think you guys hit the mark. It, the character designs, let's say, even if you're just tapping on the, the cartoon, they're so much fun and your, your sculpts and your designs emulate that. And I mean, constantly, like there hasn't been, a figure yet where I'm like, nah, I wish they didn't do that character. Every single character, <laughs> oh, regardless sure. if it's like a poignant character or whatever, it still lends itself to such a, a, a distinct looking action figure to where, you know, a lot of people will come over and they'll say, well, before all this kind of stuff, but back in the day, in the beyond yon times, you know, um, you know, <laughs> people would come over and they go like, oh, where'd you get those turtles? I remember that. I remember that guy, you know, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. that's where it's gotten to this point where, you had the basic articulation, five points. They were all kind of He-Man pose, you know, pre-pose and all that. Right. Um, but now, you know, you've you've instituted the articulation with them and everything else. And for me, articulation is not huge. I, I prefer more what they look like over articulation. A lot of people go, ah, come on. But it doesn't need to have, you know, crazy amount as long as it's so completely cartoon accurate. I mean, even with your metal head coming out and i'm looking at the the playmates one on my shelf right now mm. it's it's straight it's i mean it's even straight out of the video game you know what i mean that the design didn't differ too much um yeah but you can hear the sounds and you know all the all the the, the stuff that just is associated with that character but that's one again i'm it looks so good it's a giant metal turtle he's got all the attachments and everything yeah metalhead was like definitely a uh like a, a turning point i think when we got to when when metalhead was one that i always wanted to to do 
because he that's it that's another it's a great character he's awesome in the video games and you know he's awesome toy uh mm-hmm. you know he's got i think he's he's in two episodes one and a half kind of but yeah he's, that's like that's another iconic character and he's in the 2012 show quite mm-hmm. a bit um but when yeah when randy agreed like oh yeah yeah we should do yeah metalhead let's do that i was like holy crap we're kind of like off and running now because he was <laughs> it was the same with like treg and granitor like when i when i had proposed that um you know those are two another like two of my favorite characters mm-hmm. and they're obscure like treg is definitely more well known than granitor he granitor never had a toy ever no yeah. um, but that like i sculpted treg and granitor before bebop and rocksteady like years ago and um yeah, like the, the fact that we were getting to these other characters, it was so exciting because it was, again, it's like, I was thinking, well, if I buy like, you know, if I, you see a lot of people online, like they'll take the thing from Fantastic Four and like customize a, a drag. Mm-hmm. And so there was, there were so many characters, like a couple, even just a couple years ago, I'm like, well, if I bought this old like soda figure, like Street Fighter I could probably make a Bebop or I could make Razar, you know, like if I get a Blanca, I, maybe I could turn that into Toka somehow. Like there was all these characters I was thinking, like, I'm just going to have to customize them myself because we'll never, there's no way we're going to get to all yeah. these, you know, like secondary characters. They're, like maybe they're in one episode or two or something. When Randy agreed and like, we're going to do Metalhead. I was just like, oh, this is great. And we put in, he has like a perfect, like a swivel going in the waist so he can do like that 360 degree, like roundhouse kick, like in the video games, mm-hmm. you know, like there's just the articulation on him is pretty cool. Like you can get him into good fight poses. And then we give him like the goofy attachments, like, um, you know, he's got like the vacuum arm that you see <laughs> like in the, the, the 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 sewer like the layer is is a mess and splinters like you guys need to clean this up and then donatello like kind of dusts off metalhead and like pushes him into the room and then for some reason he's got like a vacuum arm you know it's just like some goofy like it's a joke on the episode it's just like one gag but then like we get to make a actual toy like recreate that scene so yeah it's like super cool well that's cool yeah just because you wonder, you go, okay, I'm going to make Metalhead. Now, what do I give him accessory-wise? But again, you guys are giving him stuff from the actual show. And as yeah. an adult collector now, that's that's what I want to see. Even if it's obscure as all holy heck, it's like, well, at least it's something that draws upon the actual source material. So you can, Yeah, if you can, like, recreate those moments from the show, and, like, tons of people do, like, Instagram and, like, all the toy photography now, it's just, like, unbelievable what people yeah. are you know, or like you just see like, because there is a time where it's like, as an adult, you could collect these toys, but you can't. There's not really a whole lot to do with them. You know, they just kind of sit on your shelf. But now there's like, there's a whole world of like toy photographers that go out like set up dioramas, like they go outside and like they do these like incredible like photo shoots. And it's like, yeah. like as an adult, like you can now play with toys again and kind of have fun and capture these moments. Right. So it's yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool that like a couple of years ago you really that like there wasn't a platform for that like there is now you know mm-hmm. so. no some of the stuff that i see it, it, it for the creativity and then just the sheer like like that's hilarious like it's more comedy and i love when like say yeah you're including the the vacuum cleaner handle or uh, you know, another company will do, um, like, was it Diamond Select did a bucket with one of their Castlevania figures? You know what I mean? Like, the weirder the accessories, if they still apply, is more fun because you can take these wild photos and and, oh, yeah. be, and joke around with it and, and just do, you know, bizarre stuff. But it's fun. And again, like you just said, it's a new way to kind of play with your toys as an adult. You're taking hilarious photos or serious photos or whatever, and the creativity's there. I, yeah, I was I was never one to just like leave them in the box and like sort of hang them on the wall or you know mm-hmm. I always like to open the toys and pose them and play like and build dioramas for them you know like give them cool setups I was always always building bat caves and uh, 
you know, just like <laughs> there was in co- there, a time in college when uh, me and a bunch of friends, we lived in this this really old house. It was like this old Victorian, this real rundown place. And uh, there was a giant like vent that like it ran under the floor and there was a huge grate, you know. Mm-hmm. And one day I just I took all my I opened the I took the grate off the floor and just set up all my Ninja Turtles like down in this like air vent. <laughs> and uh, and I didn't tell anyone I did it. I just I was home alone. <laughs> I set up everything. I made like a turtle layer like in in this like ducting like in the floor. <laughs> I put the grate back on it and then I just like left it there, you know? And like, as you'd walk by, like people would like kind of stop and look down and be like, there's like a turtle van, like something would catch their eye. Yeah. And then you'd, you'd have to like get down on the floor and like peek through the vents and see like, there is like the Ninja Turtles were like living under our floorboards, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? But that makes like, for good, like cameraing, especially if you're setting it up for photography and stuff like that, you know, like looking through the, the sewer yeah. grading or you know something like that's cool yeah, yeah so it's yeah it's it's just fun to i don't know these toys are just they're fun to play with so. in in talking about your dioramas uh that you guys set up especially let's say for comic-con new york toy fair all that kind of stuff the i love that you put in for the dioramas you put in like these hidden easter eggs of things maybe coming of things maybe just for fun like one of them had like the ace duck poster i yeah. remember and um you know the one and you'll have to tell me about the triceratops i don't remember the three triceratons i've always remembered general you know general triceraton the main one right. um and then mozar from uh from the comics and stuff but what episode was the ones with the yellow triceraton and the green because oh, yeah. i was when i saw that i was like that stumped me i gotta you know. yeah yeah that's um that's a later episode it's in like season I don't know, six or seven or it's, it's way later. It's, I think it's called like night of the dark turtle or like Donatello, the dark turtle, something ha- like Donatello gets electrocuted and then basically just dresses up like Batman. And he's, <laughs> he's running around like just beating up criminals and, you know, he's kind of doing his own thing. And then mm-hmm. like the B story for whatever reason, the Triceraton, federation i think it's different in the cartoon they're called like the federation and not the empire i think okay but anyways it, it's just kind of like a, it's just the b story of that episode is like the triceratons show up to conquer earth so the the general like the, the the regular like triceraton soldiers are what we all know it's like just mm-hmm. the basic like the dark orange you know with like the silver armor and stuff so there, you know, there's an army of them that like get off of the ship and they're taking over the city. And then there's like, there's Captain Xerax and Lieutenant Zork. And <laughs> that's the only time they ever appear. And I think it's the only time that there's ever like kind of not like Triceratons are always orange as far mm-hmm. as I know. Yeah. Unless they're printed in black and white. <laughs> and then yeah, right. <laughs> don't know what color they are, I guess. But yeah, so that so so it's a it's a it's an obscure episode from like really late in the series. Uh, Zer, Captain Zer, and I think it's the only time that those two names are ever used because everywhere else it's like it's Mozar and Zog and um, oh god, I think there's Traximus is one of them. Yeah. So what's what's the one that's in the sewer that he ends up like befriending the turtles? That's Zog. Versus- Zog, okay. I think that I think was always one. Yeah. I think that's always been Zog. Okay. I always liked that character. I I remember the artwork a lot from the yeah. uh, the comic. Um, there's something about the Triceratons that's a very interesting, you know, silhouette and and whether it be in full armor or whatever, you know, it's they're always cool looking. I started, yeah, I love the Triceratons. I started a, uh, a custom couple years ago i was gonna build like a triceraton army out of like old playmates figures mm-hmm. and i started like kit bashing a bunch of like just any of the old turtle toys and i actually took one of the um psycho from earthworm jim <laughs> oh yeah and then added some <laughs> added some other parts to him and, and like i used that as zog because the psycho body is like bigger he's in like a ripped up space suit i took the um 
Oh God, what's the guy's name from Dinosaurs that Sherman Hel- Helmsley did the oh, voice? Oh, Earl. Earl. It's yeah. Earl's boss. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, like the BP guy from the trailer. Something. <laughs> Yeah. But I took there's like there's one toy of him and I was going to use him as like like the big fat like emperor triceraton. Yeah. And I put him on a toxic crusader body because it was like a big like kind of blubbery like alien monster guy. I just think I think that's cool. That, and then like hearing like your thought process from going from making them yourself to now full blown you know, make them and for all of us to uh, equally enjoy. And again, going from like, you know, well-known to the very obscure, it's just, it's a, it's a knockout one after another. Like, like I just said, I don't know who the yellow and the green triceratons are, yeah. but I want them. I want that, them. <laughs> you know, those guys too. Like I was shocked when that was another one that like Randy surprised me. Cause I, I just thought we were going to do like a, an army builder two pack of like the orange guy. Yeah, he's just doing like the, the I think we're calling him like the infantryman. I, I, that's all I expected was we're just going to do that. And then uh, and I sent Randy this picture. I was like, you know, there's two other guys. There's like a light. There's like a yellow one and a green one. Mm-hmm. And I, but I was like, they're so obscure. Like they're no one even knows who these two are. And Randy was like, oh, they look badass. We should totally do them. And I was mm-hmm. like, really? There's all this like there's a bunch of new parts. And like we got to I was like, it's like making. I was like, Randy's like, yeah, they're cool. And I, I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, great. Okay. Yeah, all right, cool. I was like, Soul, that's done. more that like, again, I probably would have just customized or I would have asked the factory like, hey, can you inject one in yellow and inject one in green for me? And, yeah. you know, I'll just make my own custom, like, again, just like customize everything. And that's cool that you guys actually, you know, you reuse some things, but at the same time you're getting new parts, new figures. And that that's just what elevates the, the collection, you know, and, and it's not the same thing over and over and over again. So what um, what's we know of a, a couple that are coming out, you know, we got the especially the roadkill Rodneys, which are very cool. Um, what are figures that you hope to eventually get to or what, what characters um, do you that are like the must must haves now that you've gotten? so far into um you know obscurity now that you can kind of do the more lesser known characters um yeah my probably like my number one some of my all-time favorite like obscure characters from the cartoon were the punk frogs oh yeah um randy might have hinted at that on a uh, previous interview show a week or two ago (laughs) We may or may not be doing those. I, I can't say for sure. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, doing doing if we if we get to the punk frogs and you can have like the four turtles and the four frogs and yeah, Splinter and Shredder and like just one big happy family there. Like it's the the punk frogs are great and they you, like they showed up in a a handful of episodes more than more than I remembered when I you know you go back and watch these things now. Yeah, take a lot of notes and stuff, and yeah, punk frogs are awesome. Um, again, st- strictly just speaking as a fan, it would be yeah. another one would be Usagi Yojumbo. Oh yeah, that'd love, be a good one. Like I would absolutely love to do that character. Um, what about Space Usagi? No? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> oh yeah, that's another one that's like definitely top of top of my list from like the cartoon. Yeah, because you think about it, there's so many. The, the one that I want you guys to make more than anything, I've always been a wingnut and screw loose. And mm-hmm. a couple of people I've talked to, you know, they, like, they're like, oh, when, ask them, ask them when you're going to, when you're going to do that one. Like if, if that's the one that I'm, cause I, I liked the, the, the old playmates one was a lot of fun, but yeah. let's, you know, let's say, you know, super seven's doing the more like playmates type thing. The, the comic yeah. book one and the toy, you know, I'm sorry, the cartoon uh, versions of wingnut and screw loose. I think those would lend themselves definitely well those are such a great design um but the mutanimals in general if you guys ever want to do that <laughs> please get to the get the original mutanimals yeah. the the archie comic version <laughs> um yeah those would be cool too because there's there's a couple guys in the mutanimals that like they didn't appear in anything else right like yeah jaguar and uh dreadmon which yeah like i remember you know having the playmates all set up you had, you had um ray filet and 
Wingnut and screw loose, Leatherhead, Mondo Gecko. Mondo Gecko. Want to do that one too? That was cool. Um, but yeah, they never had Jaguar and Dreadmon. And I think I you you know when I had my setup, I used um, Razar as Dreadmon. If I remember. Oh yeah, you know that I mean? makes like, sense. That's just to kind of have him in. Yeah, and uh, but for Jaguar, no dice. He, he was always off screen somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, when I was a kid, I always used uh, Ninjor from E-Man as, oh, okay. uh, as my Tatsu figure. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how we all have our little, uh, like, action figure hacks, you know, from back in the day. <laughs> and nowadays, we don't have to worry about it anymore because everyone yeah, makes everything we want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, you know, that's kind of the fun. That was one thing that resonated, like, when you watch, like, Toy Story, and it's just, like, you know, there's a piggy bank and a Mr. Potato Head and there's like just toys from, you know, there's little green army men and like a barrel of monkeys. You know, it's just that was kind of how it was when you're a kid. There's just little bits and pieces. You never had a complete, you know, set of anything. It was just yeah, mix and match, fill in the gaps where you can with whatever you had. And, you know, you got to get like kind of creative sometimes. And I... I for me, for back in the day collecting, it was like a sin if you put, you know, characters together. Like, oh, Spider-Man and, and Batman, they don't go together. But in going back to, like, creativity online and stuff, you know, people putting, like, somebody, somebody had, like, a couch and he had all the characters, like Batman. So, you know, you could create such fun fantasy-type uh, pictures and photos now. And it's okay to kind of put you know, different companies, different brands, different characters together now um, because they're all just so darn good. Everybody is making so many. It's it's hard to keep up after a while. It's like every single company, for the most part, knocks it out of the park with whatever they're kind of producing. So Yeah, the bar has been uh, raised. So there's yeah. def- it's definitely kind of feels like a, some kind of golden age of toy collecting right now. Yeah. Most definitely, and I wanted to. I don't ever want it to go away. I just wanted to keep (laughs) keep going. Just oh yeah, everybody's on the up and up. Um, Now I have to ask you this. I know we've been talking about turtles. Now I was a big Palisades fan, especially with Invader Zim, and uh, I know you worked on that. uh, Your production assistant, you told me. Um, Are there any good story that the Invader Zim line holds like a special place for me because of how I had to get those figures? Like I had a friend that hot topic and she'd call mm. me up and she'd be like your new figures came like i'm holding the wave for you right now and it's a lot of great memories associated with it but they were so different at least for me at the time you know you had spawn and and um and things like that but palisades again they were so show specific in their accessories their paint their look um what role did you have on all of those uh very little <laughs> oh okay well then I, never mind we'll move on no <laughs> No, they uh, they were already making those when I got there. Mm-hmm. Um, I would do a lot of the uh, packaging photography, so okay. I was like, flipping a lot of photos. Um, uh, I think I did a couple. I helped out with some of the the package designs on a few of them. Um, I like I had not seen that show. I was not familiar with it. it like mm-hmm. a lot of people at pa- Palisades wasn't a very big company like there was the head um package designer uh greg Luin. he was he was a fan of the show and palisades just wanted to this is this is a story that i heard when i mm-hmm. when i got there was um they really wanted to get the ren and stimpy license yeah and that was like that was the thing that they were like you know they were really interested in that and Nickelodeon was kind of like, we'll give you that. Are you interested in like any of this other stuff? And they, there was fairly odd parents. They did some figures uh, and they're like, we have this show Invader Zim. And it was c- going to kind of like lump everything into like one deal, basically. Mm-hmm. And no one like knew what it was in this. And the package guy, Greg, was like, Invader Zim kicks ass. Like he's like, we got to We got to make figures for that. And you know, that turned out to be like the big smash hit. Like that one was, nobody saw it coming. And then, you know, Hot Topic couldn't keep them in stock. I think the second series was like 
exclusive to Hot Topic, maybe. You know, they did like a couple different versions. Like that. Yeah, it was like a weird like, the surprise line or something. Yeah. Sorry. But um, but yeah, it's it's one of those things. Like you know, the Ren and Stimpy toys were cool and. Uh, they didn't sell very well, so we never got to produce like the second series, mm-hmm. which is a shame because the second series of Ren and Stimpy was like is even better. They were so cool. Like there's Powdered Toast Man and <laughs> um, this uh, Kowalski guy was like a prisoner or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Invader Zim caught everyone by surprise. And then um, I do remember um, I was at Comic Con that year with palisades and we were we were hanging out at some party and there was like a writer from invader zim and he was like oh you guys are doing the the zim toys he's like i love those like they're so cool and i like i had never seen the show and i had to kind of like just like nod along oh yeah yeah the show's great (laughs) man yeah it's a funny show and he the writer from the show started like pitching ideas for figures and i was trying to like remember all this stuff like I, I couldn't write it down or anything but at some point he just he looked at me and he realized like I had no idea what he was talking about like he knew <laughs> I had never seen the show like he totally called me on like my just nodding along like kind of bullshit <laughs> like yeah man it sounds great <laughs> like I remember just feeling like complete trash you know because I was like oh crap <laughs> like, <laughs> I got I was well, totally Totally well, the line still came out good though, so that that's what's most it's great. important. I think right? there was there was gonna be. <laughs> I don't think it ever came out. There was gonna be like a Santa Zim. And yeah, I believe that was. I remember if if I remember seeing something. Either I was at Comic Con and saw it, or I saw photos somewhere. And then yeah, it, the line fizzled out before it ever came to be. Um, but yeah, that would have been that would have been another great one that. Again, like like the turtles and stuff, they're such bizarre designs and they're so angular that they lend themselves well to uh, the action figure I- medium. You know what I mean? So and, oh, yeah. and then plus with the build a house and you had the kind of like the build a oh, lab right. and all. There was the build a house. Yeah. Holy and crap. that's huge. It's a huge yeah. um, uh, display that you. I mean, it came with and people. I did a, a couple of videos on Zim and I you know I still plan on talking about them more in separate videos and stuff but what you got back in the day i think they were i think they were 15 um Mm -hmm. and i remember being a little kid and going like oh man these are so expensive you know what i mean but nowadays it's like oh that was cheap for what you got Um, oh yeah but there was so much in it yeah that build a house stuff there's just massive amounts of plastic in there yeah so they were going to do that sesame street too there was going to be like a build a sesame street or you could do the one, two, three building, and then oh, the next series was gonna, you know, be that little corner nook area, and then there's like Big Bird's, you know, that wall. Like they were gonna, I think it was gonna wrap all the way around to like Mr. Hooper's store, and everything. that was the plan for like four or five series of Sesame Street. Mm. You buy all the figures, and you're gonna be able to have kind of like how Diamond does, like with the Ghostbusters rooftop and the, you know, the the yeah. fire house front doors and everything. No, and I I, I like that. Um, it, you know, even if it's over multiple waves or something like that, it's when you finally finish it. You know, you you have a sense of accomplishment. You're like, oh man, it's been... yeah. When you look yeah. on the shelf and you have this like, you just have this massive world. You know. Like, yeah. Yeah. In terms of like for the turtles, you know, you guys have done the diore- the two level diorama. Um, and you kind of tease like maybe a cartoon version, maybe something along the lines of maybe like a Technodrome version at some point. You know, like I think that would be kind of cool, like have a uh, you know, Krang's lab and screens and Shredder and all that kind of yeah. stuff. That would be that would be cool. There, there's, uh, there's so much you guys could do, and I'm so excited to see what you guys end up doing. Yeah, the the display that was at Toy Fair, like the that street scene, is definitely like. We're making that with the uh, the big antenna that Bebop and Rocksteady were like hanging off of. Um, there's going to be like some signs that you can like plug into the building. Uh, okay. That you can put like you know there's going to be like a pizza logo. Um, 
there's gonna, a bunch of signage and stuff. Those Ace Duck posters, I think, are going to be included with it. Um, yes. <laughs> so that and that was a thing too. Like I, I really wanted to do that where he's only ever referenced one time on the show, and they're watching. I think Splinter changes the channel, and they're like, we're watching like an Ace Duck film festival. <laughs> and I had this idea to just be like, you know, what if we what if we actually just made some titles for some fake like ace duck movies, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I had a friend of mine, like just kind of do all the paintings and stuff. We found these old, um, a bunch of old, like Paramount, like movie serials, like called uh, bulldog Drummond. Okay. It's like yeah. bulldog Drummond strikes again, like revenge of bulldog Drummond arrest bulldog drumming <laughs> so we just like and they're all great it's like what the star wars titles are you know it's just like yeah attack of the clones like all you know all that stuff so we just made like six or seven different uh ace duck like movie titles and then illustrated the posters and you know it's just it, like that stuff to me is like super fun where you just get to like kind of expand and like do this you know just take what was barely on the show and then like kind of just play with it, you know, and like make yeah. it, up, you know, turn it into something like bigger, you know? So it's. Well, um, it really it emphasizes the world, you know, especially in, if, if you are one of those people, you're only collecting turtles, then you can create such a massive expansive world on your shelf. And I think, I think that's what a lot of lines are sometimes lacking nowadays. You know, there's, you can display them in a glass case all you want, but it's really putting them in an, in an environment that replicates the source material that I think, again, like a lot of figures and, and, and brands are lacking in that sense. Um, yeah. Well, and, and Turtles has got such a rich history now. There's like such a diverse group of characters and, you know, there's there's all kinds of places you can go with just the cartoon or like you know, there's, there's lots you can do with the movies and the video games. And it's all like, you can basically, you can kind of just build this like multiverse of like just turtle stuff, you know, it's, yeah. it's, you know, a couple of years ago, it was like, we're probably just going to do the four turtles. We we're kind of lucky to, to do shredder and the foot soldier. Hopefully we can, you know, do one or two, you know, bebop and rocksteady or something else. But Mm-hmm. Yeah, a couple because we were just limited to like selling stuff at the conventions. So we yeah, it is really narrow window. We could only do so much, you know. And you know now that everything's at Target and Walmart, and we had stuff at GameStop, and there's the specialty markets or the specialty stores. Um, yeah, it gives us like a ton of opportunity to like just do more characters, and it's all just so like it's all so much fun. You know, yeah. So. What um, so you you know you have the video games, you got the movies, you got the cartoon. Are there any other variances of the turtles that you eventually would want to explore, or something that you think fans would want to see, or you would want to see? Well, like the, you know, there's the comics. There, yeah. I don't, you, know, you don't want to leave out the comics, like because there in the comics there's so many like versions that they appear in. You know, the, there's the classic Mirage stuff. Yeah. And then there's the Archie stuff. And there's a huge fan base for that. And if then, you like, guys could ever do Cerebus, that would like with the Ninja Turtle pe- somehow, some way, that would be the the Aardvark guy. You remember that? Uh, oh, problem. him? <laughs> yeah, that's always one I've always wanted to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's probably a little far down. I might want to get to like Fugitoid before. Oh yeah, that'd be Cerebus, a good one. <laughs> but like, yeah, certainly I'm not gonna count him out. Like, it's anything's possible. Yeah, or Renee, the time yeah, stuff. You know what I mean? Like going that's really, definitely. really obscure. Um, but no, I agree. Yeah, the comics, the com- either the, the Mirage and then even the IDW. For me, it's that, Archie. Well, I was, I was, you know. But, yeah, uh, if there's anything from like the modern era, it would be like IDW or maybe the 2012 show. I'd want to, you know, if I, yeah. if, I had, if I had one wish, you know. I'd, it would be one of those two things because those are both, you know, they're really, they're great. There's a huge fan base for those. And it's, again, yeah. it's like, it's kind of underserved. Like there really isn't anything for IDW turtles and, 
Um, yeah, I, like, I, I know that I know that there's a demand for that stuff. So that would be. Yeah. No, and it, it's it's funny the way that works because you know, like you said, there's there's so many different variances of turtles. There's turtles that you guys are doing. You know, there's there's something for everyone. So I think for right now you you're covering most bases. But it, for what could come later, you know, there's plenty of material still left yeah. to make. So oh yeah, it's, to be in good, good hands. <laughs> it's yeah. At a certain point, we'll definitely run out of like cartoon and movie stuff and video game stuff. You know, mm-hmm. and it's like, what else is there? And it's like, well, you know, maybe we could, you know, hopefully we could get to like IDW or some of this other. It, it's Turtles is like ever since it showed up in like kind of the mid eighties, it's just never gone away. You know, like it's, yeah, there's, there's a few people I know they're, you know, they're a little older and they didn't quite like kind of get turtles. It wasn't their thing. They're like, Oh, it's kind of a fad, you know, but it's like the show was on for eight or nine years. And right after that, it got rebooted to next mutation. And then not long after that, there was like the four kids show, you know, in the early 2000s, it's like, it just keeps, yeah refreshing every couple of years it's it's never really gone away so when when can we expect figures for the um turtles uh concert series the rock concert oh Oh, yeah we'll get right on that Um, perfect okay confirmed (laughs) (laughs) you gotta you gotta include the cassette tapes uh with each turtle if uh, if that is ever a thing i remember being in a gas station and the whole uh, gas the the big you know wire mesh the basket in the front of the store it was all the the turtles you know cassette t- I was just was I always remember that as a kid I'm like wow these didn't sell like yeah. at all like in the, yeah they're all a dollar bin or something yeah I I went to that show and oh uh, did you really <laughs> yeah whenever whenever it was 90 or 91 or whenever it came out I was yeah my parents took me to that and I was like this is just so weird. Like, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Shredder's it's, outfit is like so bizarre. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Splinter was Splinter. terrifying. Splinter was really scary looking. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 there was one point I think where one of the turtles, it might have been Raph. Someone came out on a skateboard, but they had to like ride it on their belly because. <laughs> Like, I don't think they could they could stand on it without, like, wiping out, like, just yeah. really getting hurt or something. And I remember thinking, this is the lamest, like, riding a skateboard on your butt or on your belly is just, like, the lamest thing you can do. <laughs> it's just so it's like It's like when you first get a skateboard, you go to the top of the hill, and you're just like, what do I do? I just, oh, yeah, just sit on it, and you yeah, I'll fall. Just, and I'll you just, just scoot down the hill on my butt. And it, you know, and then, because in the, in the first movie, they're, like, riding skateboards and, like, you know, doing a bunch of tricks and stuff like they're, you know, it's like they're actually skateboarding in the movie. Yeah. You go and see the, you go, go and see the music tour and it's just like <laughs> complete night and day, like opposite of what the movie was, you know? Well, it, it, with, with what you guys have done with the movie stuff, you know, I was I joke with Randy, even at you know, Toy Fair in February, I was like, you know, it, they're like, You've you've created little tiny suits, you know. I mean, like even you've recreated the movie so perfectly, it doesn't even make any sense. It looks like I'm looking at the movie come to life. Um, they're so ridiculously spot on. And now you got Toka and Razar. Um, when can we expect the Vanilla Ice figure? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's another one. Like <laughs> that would be so cool to do, but. Um... That probably isn't going to happen. But man, ah, dang. That oh, would be well. great. Should, that, no, that's, I, the, that's the thing with turtles yeah. is like it, they can go in these weird directions, and like yeah. it's still like it's like people want a vanilla ice figure. Like how cool would like the collection's not complete without you know vanilla ice. Oh, uh, I could just I, I could just I, see him like touting that at like you know comic-con or something like that like that what a photo you know what i mean like he's yeah because he still embraces it like you see him on on instagram like he goes to shows and like the tmnt van guy like he's oh there like there's always turtles at his shows like he Mm -hmm. you know he's totally like he's all in on on, uh yeah i just think that's such a cool that would make for such a 
such an awesome figure that <laughs> so many great photos could be uh could oh, be yeah. done with that that's for sure and then you could put him with like predator and alien and you could put him with like oh yeah you put him in any display you know it's like all of a sudden there's like just vanilla ice well that's the thing you guys make you know you made ace ventura you know with naked toys and stuff um like that that to me when i got that figure i've had so much fun with it because i'm just oh, like yeah. god dang like there's so many opportunities of like photos and everything i took it to the grocery store and put him on a, a can of or a stack of bumblebee tuna <laughs> posted that you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah that's perfect like i actually took it to the store in a bag and 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 willingly set that up you know what i mean like yeah. that's how crazy it uh, yeah it gets that's sometimes awesome. <laughs> so for you in terms of um turtles we've gone covered that what else what are the lines have you worked on for either NECA or something that you're most particularly proud of whether it be for NECA or mezco or dc collectibles um yeah, there's a few things. Like when I first started at NECA, um, that was in like 2010, mm-hmm. and one of the very like the the one of the first things I ever worked on was uh, the Gremlins, like from uh, the new batch, like part two. Okay. And I got so I got to work on like George and Daffy and Lenny and all the uh, the Phantom Gremlin and did a did a handful. I a lot of them it was like I, I would do a new head sculpt because we. I think Kyle Windricks like did the original body mm-hmm. and then um but those were a lot of fun to work on because it was all like goofy puppet stuff and um that mo- both Gremlins movies are awesome that was stuff I grew up with I love that so it was like those were super fun um yeah. I've worked on really everything at NECA is is just fun like I've worked on like Predator figures and I've worked on a couple alien things here and there and that Kenner alien stuff you guys are doing is again yeah, like those are, turtles yeah it's yeah all awesome the, all the Kenner homage like the alien and the predator stuff is is super cool like those pretty like Dave Silva handles really all of that stuff and he designs um the uh like all the Kenner homage like all the armor pieces and the weapons everything like Dave mm-hmm. kind of handles all of that. I've done, I've done. We we would split up a lot of the package uh, package illustrations. Mm-hmm. It was like Jeff Trap and Dave and I, because there's usually like three figures in a wave. So like, I've done a couple, and that that's fun too, because that's another thing. Like you can just kind of scratch it off the bucket list. Is like toy like package illustrations from the 80s were it's some of the greatest. It's like fine art, you know. Yeah. Like, the stuff that was on He-Man packaging and the G.I. Joe stuff. and uh, That's what I think a lot is missing even today. There, there's still a couple, like you guys do it, but there's nothing better than kind of walking through the aisle and seeing that really eye-catching artwork. Yeah, you know? there's and, a lot of stuff that's just so kind of bland. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we get to do, it was like, yeah, we so, so we try to, from top to bottom, we try to emulate like what the source material is and it goes all the way through packaging and every aspect of the toy. You know, we changed the NECA logo to look like the old Kenner font. I love that. You know, even so if the, yeah, even with the FHE yeah, logo yeah, exactly. that you guys. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, doing like some, some package illustrations for like Kenner style predators that was another thing that was, you know, you just sit there for, and it's a good change of pace because you're like sculpting all day and it's not that yeah. that ever gets tiresome, but then you like switch over and you like work on a painting for a couple of days and it's mm-hmm. a good change of pace and you just, you know, um, so you can, it's fun to kind of bounce back and forth from like one to the other. Uh, but that's, that's been a lot of fun. I've worked on like some Freddy Krueger stuff, just a little bit here and there. Very um, cool. And yeah, Freddy, Freddy was great. The Freddy Krueger, that was the first action figure I ever sculpted. It was for Mezco. It was like one of the vinyl, like the eight or the nine inch stylized mm-hmm. uh, Mezco I remember, figures. That was I like the that, very yeah. first toy I had, I had ever done. Um, so Freddy's kind of followed me since then. I've, like, that's been fun to work on. Um, it's funny that a lot of people, when they, a lot of times, nowadays people think of mezco and they go okay it's the only the 112th you know 
they yeah they really reinvented themselves with that 112 thing because before that it was all like cartoony like big like vinyl like you know like blow molded figures and like yeah they're it's it's almost a whole new company with the 112 thing now yeah no seriously like i mean they had they had like notorious big they had popeye and um yeah oh yeah i like the Popeye and the Hellboy stuff that they did years ago, I, those are some of my favorite figures. Mm-hmm. They were so cool. Um, you reminded me of like all my trips to like Sam Goody and the warehouse and stuff, <laughs> and, stuff and seeing all those figures back in the day. Cause that's, I mean, oh, yeah. the, the aisles were, were small in that, or they didn't really have aisles, but they had like a wall or they had like a little uh, center kiosk little thing. And where all the figures would hang and stuff. And I remember going to it, and they had Futurama at the time. And Those are great, too. Yeah, the 20 yeah. Futurama stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I still have Nixon's head in a jar sitting on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah, those those are fun, too. What a, what about uh, are you are you collecting uh, these days? Like, what's what's your like kind of like go-to stuff that you're all about? Um, I... I avoided it for a long time, but once Hasbro started doing like the straight up like the '90s X-Men and Spider-Man, I couldn't resist. So <laughs> that that um, the Apocalypse like build a figure wave. Yeah, that was like a great Sabre's, one. Apocalypse is one of my favorite villains, you know, and it's in you know now they've got like Strong Guy coming out, and man, that's because that's just all the all the best stuff like the um you know i've got yeah I, just, i'm looking at a shelf of them right now it's like archangel the colossus that was in the juggernaut two pack like bishop it's it's the it's, the it's the 90 stuff. it's that nostalgia yeah yeah it's, it's like just all the jim lee x-men stuff is yeah yeah so cool um so i get i pretty much get all of that stuff uh I, I'm I'm kind of bummed out that Super Seven has to take a break on the filmation He Man because that was a line that was really I had I had all the Mattel stuff too all the Maddie Collector classic mm-hmm. stuff I had all that and then um, and then the filmation stuff was just cool and different and like kind of a fun way to like you know kind of breathe new life into the line and like and Super Seven has a very I have a similar sensibility to kind of like what they do so. Like when they made Dial a Mug early on, yeah, yeah. I, like I'm all in. And they did the the He Man with the ripped the robotic face. You know that was I remember watching that as a kid when He Man's face peeled off and it was just like a robot and it terrified <laughs> me. And that was again that was something I was like sculpting on my own because I was like I don't think anyone at Mattel is paying attention to this. Like I'm there's stuff I'm gonna like I was thinking like I might have to just make a Dial a Mug myself someday because there's no way that's ever going to happen and then super seven comes along and like the uh fisto and chopper and jitsu you know like all like they're just great they're all yeah, great. yeah. um hopefully they get back to it because i you know the whiplash and buzz off filmation style are kind of must-haves mm-hmm. um, did you get the snake mountain the big place that coming out I don't have room. Uh, man, I want to, and it's amazing that they did that. Yeah. I I don't have room for that. That's like I'd have to ship it to like my parents' house or something and just be like, Mom, just keep it in the backyard. Like I'll come get it. Like Right. You know, <laughs> like you can park in the driveway or just like Yeah, I, I don't have room for that. Um I'd, I, I'd love to though. i it's it's too crazy. I don't have gray skull either, because it was just Yeah. It's too big. With the, uh, like, I'm a big Transformers fan, too, and, and you know, the Unicron has, I, I almost got it, I really wanted it, but then I look at it, I'm like, where would I put, I, you know, it's, yeah. it's all about space, and while it's a beautiful looking piece, like, you know, like with Snake Mountain and everything else, um, it is all about room, sometimes at the end of the day, and, um, you know, with all the good stuff coming out, you gotta pick and choose yeah, accordingly. It's almost so. like if it was a little bit more of like a piece of furniture, right. maybe I could justify it. Like it could be my new like coffee table slash snake mountain, you know? Like, yeah, it's, exactly. Like it's basically, it is just its own like dresser or 
you know, it's its own shelf basically. It's just yeah, like yeah, I just I don't know. I don't have the room for some, you know, maybe if they turn Unicron into like a chandelier, some kind of light fixture, you could like <laughs> hang it from the ceiling. <laughs> it's still like, I have like, I have the turtle blimp, you know, and it's like, it's blown oh, up. Yeah. Right now, but it's like, I need to hang it from the ceiling. Cause right now it's just taking up space in our closet. And <laughs> it's, yeah. I hear it. I've got like a giant stay puff marshmallow man over here. And I just, it just kind of keeps fidgeting around the room. Like, okay, I'll put it yeah. over here for right now. Oh, okay. You I'll put don't want to get rid of it, but you got it. Yeah. There's nowhere to put it. Oh yeah. No, we're all action figure collectors in some way, shape or form. We're all hoarders in some way. Yeah. <laughs> you make excuses. Yeah, no, that's just, that's like, a, any great line. It's like, you've got to play into that compulsion of like, you have to get it all. Like there's always another figure to collect. It's not complete if you don't have this or that. And it's kind of, yeah, this never ending thing, you know, even, even in the sense, like, that's why I think I like, let's say even going back to like Zim or something like that, it was a very, it's a limited line. Sure. I would have liked to have seen it, um, you know, go even further, but it is kind of nice sometimes just to have maybe a 15 or less. Yeah. They know, don't all wave, have, you know, like, Pokemon yeah. where there's a thousand of them. And, yeah. yeah. Like the, like the Muppets, it's like, they made those and it, like it came to an end, you know, and it's complete. Yeah. So yeah, there's definitely, it's that, that definitely helps with like the, you know, the compulsion and stuff. Yeah. No, cause like, what you're saying, with, like <laughs> yeah, with, with legends, especially, you know, I, for years and years, I've been under the mindset, yeah, you got to get them all. And, and I find myself, getting them eventually i guess is the yeah. best word like i don't you know it, and that's with every sort of line and especially you know it's like i'll i'm trying to be good especially in this day and age you know with what everything's going on in the world it's like it's hard yeah but, it's a lot's um, changed now i've there's i've dialed way back and like the stuff i'm buying it's like do i really need this yeah like, I, I really i i was able to avoid black series stuff until mandalorian came out and then all of a sudden i was just like that kind of reinvigorated this love for star wars that was gone for years and years and years yeah and i i've been a similar, like, similar and ig88 or ig11 and like you know stormtroopers and it's it's and like you said it's it's never ending because i mean there's always more to make but yeah. then where yeah where do you draw the line but that's why i do like it though with NECA in the sense of, you know, you get, like, even, let's say, Kenner Aliens, there's three per wave, and they come out every, like, six months, eight, you know, something like that. So, mm-hmm. it does kind of aid in that, but th- but then there's so much from other companies in that space where you're just like, what happened? Like, how did I, I thought I was only doing Turtles, and now I have, you know, everything, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah luckily like some of the stuff it does get kind of fragmented like you don't have to buy all of it, it like some people you like you might just want to focus on like cartoon turtles and you don't need the arcade stuff or like yeah you know you can just get like the like i, I there was a picture i saw online someone posted their collection of like the the mirage stuff that we had done and you know that's it's all pretty old now that was like the first uh the first turtle stuff we ever did mm-hmm. but it even you know if you have that collection and then you got the foot the foot soldier set that came out a few years ago and you got april and the mousers it's like it would be nice if we just put out like a casey or fugitoid or you know just one or two you know we should make a splinter for that series because it's you know you put out one or two figures here and there to just kind of help fill it out a little bit but you don't have to go crazy and like buy Bio. yeah yeah no i think that's a good idea like it, it keeps your collection alive but then you're not you know like constantly thinking about okay what's what comes out this month oh yeah what's coming out like next month okay you know what i mean it's just like oh i heard this are coming out and i can add this to my already present collection so yeah there's, that, there's that, pros sure. and cons <laughs> well being that uh you know you 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 know you are the turtle guy you seem to know your stuff you've definitely helped me out um yeah. i asked people on my instagram and i said okay can you tr- can you stump trevor zamet he's the turtle guy and a, a couple people actually said you can't stump that guy and so no, i picked three questions stumped. 
Well, uh, I was saying, these are three questions that I didn't know, so maybe they okay. will they will stump you, and okay. um, and so we'll see we'll see how you do. So this one is from Instagram. This is Barbarian Kane, and he asks, who played Super Shredder at the end of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Two: Secret of the Ooze? Who was the actor? Oh, wasn't that, that was like uh, Razor Ramon, wasn't it? Scott Hall. No, come, that's an easy one. That was Kevin Nash did that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually I, I met Kevin Nash at New York Comic Con. I was like, I was really afraid. I him and Sergeant Slaughter and um and Scott Hall. They all had a table to, in Gangrail. They were all at this like wrestlers table at Comic Con. And I had pictures. <laughs> The, the Jason Fraley sculpted Super Shredder. I had pictures on my phone of the sculpt. It was still like in progress. And I was like, say? I was like, I should go over to Kevin and like, see if, you know, see if he's even interested in this or whatever. And, uh, and so I went over and I talked to a guy and luckily the, like the kind of the gatekeeper there, you know, like luckily yeah. that guy knew like NECA toys and he knew the the NECA turtles and he's like, oh, he's like, holy crap, yeah. And he's like, whatever, whatever you have for Kevin, you have to like show it to me first. Like he's, he wanted to, <laughs> he wanted to sneak peek a super shredder. Yeah. And I was like I was like, yeah, sure. And then uh, and so Kevin comes over and he's like, he's like ten feet tall. He's like he's just massive, right? <laughs> and so we're we're look. He's like he's like, how's it going, man? And uh, and we're like, dude, we we work for neck. And it was Jeff Trapp, the painter, was with me. We were just walking around. And, and I was like, hey, we work for NECA, and I, like, I want to show you something because there's there's going to be a lot of people with this toy like in a year or two that you know they're going to want you to sign it and stuff. And he's like, oh, this is he's like, this looks real cool. And then he told us like some stories about like being on the set and like he tried to like sneak off with the helmet, you know, because <laughs> like originally Kevin Peter Hall was supposed to be Super Shredder that he 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 was famously. Uh, you know, the predator and like mm-hmm. Harry and the Hendersons and stuff. Yeah. But like Kevin had died. So they needed like a last minute, like a replacement. And they found, they found Kevin Nash. It was in North Carolina cause he was wrestling. And I think he was like a, like, like a bouncer or something, you know, cause that was like really early in his wrestling career. He was, uh, I think he was master blaster at the time. Mm-hmm. Anyways, this is a long winded, answer to your trivia question no i'm just glad i'm glad you got it because i i i did not when I you didn't like, know that super shredder was kevin kevin nash no i i, oh, I have to admit i know i'm i need to go i'm i'm <laughs> yeah, interviews over <laughs> yeah no no that but yeah kevin was super nice when i met him and he told us these fun stories and the ridiculous amount of money he got he got paid for doing like basically like three minutes of work in the movie i think he was there for a couple weeks on set but it like you know it gets whittled down to like a couple minutes in the movie but it's like this he's this iconic <laughs> iconic character it's so yeah well that so, that figure you guys got that you showed off at toy fair i when i saw that i was like god dang like i'm trying to start a, a hashtag of like damn it zam it like everything <laughs> you guys keep putting out is just like Damn it, that's good. Oh, God. Yeah, I'd heard that my whole life. I never thought of that being a hashtag. Oh, yeah. No, if, when you, whenever you see a good new, uh, new well, that, turtle honestly, reveal. That, that's, I, I art directed that a little bit. That was all Jason Fraley. He's the okay. one that looks like the, he did the movie, the heads for the movie turtles, and he did Token and Razar. Like, he's, he's like just a, he's unbelievable. He's one of the most talented sculptors I know. He's so good. Yeah, you. I mean, you guys are just. It's it's such a cohesive. Uh, it's see, at least it seems like for what you guys put out, like the arcade, the movie, the cartoon, like everything just worked. There's no, there's no like lagging line. You know, it's just oh, everything is just yeah. like God dang. <laughs> yeah, we try to make it all as good as it it can be. You know. This is uh this is the second question. So this comes from uh, this is another one where I, I got one of them um, that you'll have to see if you get them. This is from Rick Eubanks 1212 on Instagram. What are the other animals that Bebop and Rocksteady's gang members turn into? Okay. There's four <laughs> of them. Yeah. So there's and some of them are weird. So there's yeah. 
The only other character I know of that has even has a name is Scrag. Yeah. Or possibly, I always forget, maybe it's Scarg. I think it's Scrag. Scrag, he get, yeah. He gets mutated into a bat. Yep. That's the uh, one that I got because I remembered that. I was like, yeah, okay. that, that's like uh, that's like a moment in the show. That's like you know they have the the retro mutagen gun. They zap them and Shredder zaps them back. And um, there's like a little short fat guy, and he gets turned into some kind of like a weird looking dog. Yep. Uh, to well. me, it looks it always looked like <laughs> a cheap dog, but I don't know <laughs> what. <laughs> it might be something else. I don't know. There's. Uh, there's a guy with a mohawk with like kind of gray armor and black sunglasses and he gets turned into a lizard. Yep. Um, and then shit, is there, there's one more. There's one more. Fuck, what is the other one? I'm going to, I'm going to, rem- I have the picture of it sitting on my desk, on my desktop too. Cause we put, we put that photo in the technodrome, like in the diorama. Mm-hmm. Um, Crap, that's okay. There's a lizard. There's a bat. There's a sheepdog. And oh man, Rick's got me. I don't I can't think of the last one. Well you did pretty good. I mean like, the fact that you got that. Like in the most obscure thing. It's a, a shrew. A shrew? Yeah. Okay. So you had Scrag was a bat, Grunt was a lizard, Dopey was the shrew, and Dumbo the dog. Those are all their Which, names? Yeah, I didn't know their names. I had to do some extensive internet research. Before. Who, who came up with those names? Because that's wow. That was it was uh, like a Wikipedia, like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Wikipedia or something like that. Yeah. Um, so I'm I going off have... it because I saw two 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 references to it. So unless unless Confirm. people at home listening know. <laughs> a shrew. Oh dear. I mean, it's true. I guess could be. A, I I tell you what, the bat is the only thing I remembered because when they, when I was like, I was like lizard dog. I don't remember any of that stuff. So yeah, um, in those like in that first yeah. episode, and then there you see the mutated versions in like the third or the fourth, maybe the fourth episode. I think. Mhm. You still you still beat the quit as far as I'm concerned because like come on, <laughs> nobody remembers that stuff. <laughs> yeah, you're very generous. And okay, so this was just. This one I thought would be just like a fun one. Uh, what is considered to be the rarest Playmates Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toy of that of the entire Ninja Turtle line that they did? The rarest, huh? Um, the rarest, I think, is probably Scratch. Yeah. That's um, it. There's a few, like there's that Shogun... Uh, it was like a dinosaur or something, but yeah, I think Scratch is kind of like the famously like rare, expensive. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I came across. Yeah, so that's yeah. the one I've always been told. Well, yeah, I think you you still hold the title of, uh, <laughs> of un, un, unbeatable. You could not stump uh, Trevor Zammit, so I'm glad you're making Ninja Turtle toys, sir. <laughs> I am too. Yeah, <laughs> unbeatable. Um, what uh, and I know you and we go, we'll wrap it up just because I know this is getting kind of long, but I do appreciate you, you know, being here. Is there anything else that you wanted to touch on? Anything that we could be expecting soon, or anything you want to hint at? Probably not, but I'm just asking. <laughs> I don't want uh, you. I don't want you getting fired. I want you to continue making uh, yeah, toys. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't want to get fired either. Um, that'd be bad, especially right now. It'd be real bad. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> I'm so, so thankful that I still have a job at the moment. Now we're, I mean, honestly though, we're, we're working hard. Like we're as busy as we've ever been. And, um, even though Comic-Con is canceled, you know, it's, we're still going to have some cool reveals sometime kind of mid summer. I don't exactly know when, but there's, Excellent. there's lots of stuff that we've been working on. There's like, there's, there's new figures that are in production. They're still shipping. Like stuff is going to be hitting Target and Walmart. So just, you know, be safe when you go out. Like, yeah. don't go out if you don't have to. But if you happen to be at Target or Walmart, you know, swing by the toy section and see if there's any cool NECA stuff. Or just shop online. You can get everything you need at home, I guess. Yeah, and, and you know, you guys' Twitter and Brandy were saying that, you know, for the most part, they should go up online. So when you can, if it's applicable, just, yeah, get it offline. That way you, you save yourself a trip or two. 
So yeah, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, we're just we're plugging away and like on some new stuff, uh, more cartoon figures. It really more of everything, like more more comics, more video games, more movies. You know, more cartoon figures, obviously. So, um, so our, our wallets are, are just prepare your wallet is what you're saying. <laughs> and that too, yeah, we, and we try to space everything out so it doesn't hit you all at once. And honestly, yeah. like, you don't have to buy the stuff if you don't want to. Like we try to make it kind of desirable, but mm-hmm. certainly it's like 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 I said, like I've cut way back on like I'm a collector and I compulsively, you know, I buy way more than I probably should. And yeah, it's like things are definitely kind of tight right now. So yeah, no, I hear you. It's definitely so. Yeah, I would just say buy what you can now and then years from now go back and uh, and find it you know what i mean that's that's hey, also a good policy i tell you what we're uh so we're passing the time right now by watching old episodes of star trek the next generation <laughs> i don't know if i should put this secret out there but like that show is so good but all those figures are still like five bucks on ebay yeah <laughs> so it's like and there's a know, lot of them <laughs> they made they made a ton of them and like I said I was only going to buy like one or two and it'll probably be way more. I had, I had a lot of those when I was a kid, mm-hmm. but yeah, like, I guess my point is you don't have to buy stuff right now and just wait it out in 10, 15, 20 years. You can, <laughs> you know, you can go back and buy these NECA toys on eBay. Maybe they won't be like a million dollars or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Still be affordable. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Or you guys have gotten into like, you know, the next, uh, round of them or something like that like uh, ultimate bebop or ultimate rocksteady yeah right like yeah in 30 <laughs> years we'll still be making like ultimate bebop and rocksteady ultimate mondo gecko because <laughs> there are two versions of him too there's like the hippie like woodstock version yes you know like we could there's definitely more characters we can do there's a gentleman i follow on uh, instagram he's he sculpted a lot of those old toys he posts uh um you know, the old like two ups and, and, and mock ups and all that kind of stuff. And it's really cool to see them unpainted. And just so happened, like a couple weeks ago, he did post the painted Mondo Gecko. And then he po- he pa- he, uh, the painted one as well. And it's, there's so much sculpt on that thing oh, that it's cool. wild to see. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, send like, you that. I'll, I'll send you that photo. Oh, yeah. I'd love to see that. Like, Pizza Face had like a second head like under his chef's hat. Oh, did you ever see those pictures? There's like no, like there's an unmasked <laughs> Casey from the original line that like never got produced. I think I've seen that one, I, but not the pizza, not the pizza face. That would yeah. be cool to see. There's pictures of that online. It's really crazy to see some of that that old. It's fun to look at that old stuff and like, yeah, you know, um, you know the prototype stuff that like just never saw the light of day. It's, well, as long as uh, as long as your guys' general track has a couple of bullet holes in them, uh, we'll be good. <laughs> I remember yeah. seeing that as a kid. I was like, "What is this?" You know, my parents were like, "Oh, he got jelly on him. Don't worry about it. Just keep moving." <laughs> yeah, there's some there's some gruesome stuff. Like on the bottom of his foot, there's like a splattered turtle, like a little yeah. turtle that he squished. You know, and like yeah you look at that stuff kind of cool and a lot of it you don't see because it was never painted you know so like you yeah some of the guys that, that'll paint the old figures there's tons of detail that you just you never caught all of that the first time around you know what i mean it, what was it, it yeah i think i always remember trag though because trag he had like a scorpion on him on his arm or yeah he's got like a spider web and a scorpion and yeah a he didn't, yeah he's got a bunch of he had like <laughs> like his one shoulder or something it was like there's almost like a volcano like coming out of one side of him, I think. Yeah. He's got like a yeah, snake yeah. coming up his leg, like he had a snake in his boots or something. <laughs> those those toys are so much fun because they're so different from like He Man and everything else. Like there's so much detail on those. Yeah. Like, the Playmates figures were great because they're just they had a completely different um, kind of design aesthetic, you know, from everything else. There it was just so like this refreshing new different thing you can when i get like every once in a while uh, if you find like a bag of weapons or something like if you're at a thrift store or something you can always tell the ninja turtle weapons it's like you know what i mean they were always like bright colored or a chunky kind of you know what i mean just the Mm -hmm. like you said the aesthetics of them um 
for the most part, once you get used to toys, yeah, you can kind of pick and go, okay, that goes with that, goes with that. But Ninja Turtles is just like undeniably like, yeah, that's yeah. a turtle weapon. Somehow, <laughs> yeah, some like, way. My, my mom can pick those out, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, very cool. Well, again, I appreciate you taking the time and, you know, sitting down and just kind of shooting the breeze, <laughs> talking yeah, about everything just, that you worked this on. This is fun. This is a lot of fun. Great. Well, maybe we can have you back again one day, and uh, when, when you guys get some new turtles out, we'll have you on and, and talk about them. Um, where can people find you on social media or that website or something like that? <laughs> uh, yeah, my my Instagram page is uh, Milo Favahoot. <laughs> I'll and, put a uh, link uh, if, if for you, for all those people down because people never know how to like spell anything. Don't worry. I guess yeah, that's and below. it's got an underscore in it. It's <laughs> it's you know I sometimes I I post stuff on there and then I have a I have a second page where I I, I do a lot of like goofy He-Man customs and that that also is it's a bizarre name called Burl Lancome Jr. and it's <laughs> it's basically like, like I've had a booth at PowerCon the last couple years. Okay. And basically I just like everybody's making like custom figures of he-man stuff and everything's like a cool badass looking barbarian or a monster and i've been doing customs of like all the other he-man kind of junk like the alarm clocks and the toothbrush holders and tv like dinner trays and (laughs) so and it's funny to watch because i'll like i make it's it's kind of like parody like mad magazine meets like he-man kind of stuff Mm-hmm. so it's like goof, really goofy characters and then i'll make like a lunch box and i'll try to make like i'll try to make it all distressed and old looking so people really can't tell if it's if it's legit. Real. like if it's if it's a real <laughs> or if it's fake you know that's awesome and so we'll just sit at the booth and like there'll be some dad with his kid and, and and the kid's like whoa look at this and the dad's like you can see it's like jogging his memory and he can't remember if he like you can't tell if it's real or not you know <laughs> and but the characters are so absurd that there's no way it could be real yeah but he-man was so much fun and it was so goofy that like it could be real you know because there is some weird stuff they did on that show yeah that's that's one of those those brands that you the creativity i w- was never a huge like he-man fan as a kid but seeing mm. it now i have a a different sort of respect for it because well if i'm not a, a fan of it i can at least see the the creativity that especially in the vehicles like that was yeah. something i feel like i missed out on as a kid um oh, and i the, recently just the put dragon together castle is, is okay. so cool but it, it's pointless but it's so cool because right <laughs> and like battle battle bones is one of the most ingenious like it's just it's the best way to have like a carrying case for yeah your figures and your it's he man like other than turtles like he man is probably one of my all-time like most obsessive like my one of my favorite lines like toys and comics and everything yeah it's just well there's so many it's it's a very fantasy thing like everything goes and you can do yeah you can do anything with it you can get away with anything because there's like there's astronauts like in outer space and you know yeah all that swords and science stuff that they did yeah well Good. It's just it's great that they're toys and that they still you know pertain to what's going on today and it's nice when people go back and experience them you know people that didn't weren't alive a lot I run into that a lot like oh I never had those I'm like well it's probably because you weren't around but now you can go back and you know re-experience them so yeah but well again thank you for for coming on and, and taking the time and let's do this again. Yeah, man, it, was, it was great talking to you. Cool. All right. I will talk to you soon. Thanks. All right. Take care.